Hello ladies and gentlemen. In this video I'll show you how I implemented Smart on Fire authentication in React Native and I'll demonstrate by using the Epic Sandbox. So to begin I'll show you what the final product looks like. Here I have my iPhone simulator running a React Native app that I created. I'm going to click Authenticate and the iPhone is going to say that this app is requesting me to sign into another service. So I'll click Yes to continue and I'll be directed to the Epic Sandbox MyChart page where the user can then log in to authenticate themselves. So I'm going to log in as this fake patient. And I'll be given these standard screens telling me what kind of information the app has access to. And once I've authenticated, I'll be redirected back to my React Native application where I can then make fire queries. And as you can see here, I've queried to get this patient's data. Here's his name and here's all the data from the patient read. So before I show you how I implemented this in code, I'd like to just walk through how the Smart on Fire authentication process works, at least as far as I understand it. I'm not an expert on it. But our ultimate goal is to obtain an access token that can be used when making Fire requests. And once we have that access token, that's what actually gives us permission to make those requests to the Fire server. Our starting point is the address of a Fire server, and in this case, I've got the address of the Epic Sandbox Fire server. And you should have access to this URL. It should be given to you or published somewhere. The next step is that we want to obtain two URLs. One is the authorization endpoint, and the other is the token endpoint. The authorization endpoint is what we'll use to actually direct the user to the login page where they can then provide their login credentials and authenticate themselves. And the token endpoint is the URL that we'll use to obtain our access token. Oftentimes, you can get these endpoints by appending dot well known slash smart configuration to the address of the Fire server. So if we open that up in a browser, what we'll get is this XML response here. And here we can see the authorization endpoint is defined right here. And the token endpoint is defined right here. And if we look at the EPIC documentation, we can actually find that information. And there's actually another URL that they use, the slash metadata, which looks very similar. You can find the authorization and token endpoints in this page as well. Once we have this authorization endpoint, we'll need to add some data before we submit our request. So we'll add these parameters that I have listed here. AUD is just the address of the Fire server. Client ID is the ID of the client of the app that you've registered with Epic in our case. Scope is the list of permissions that you want the application to have. Redirect URL is where you'll be redirected once the authentication is completed. And this is one of the challenges of doing this in React Native. Since we're not working in a browser, there's not really such a thing as a redirect URL. And I'll explain in just a moment how we're going to get around that. The state is a number that's used to maintain a state and the response type is always code. So I'll show you how this looks if we were to submit this URL into a browser. Okay, so I've been redirected to the Epic Sandbox login page where I can now authenticate this user. And I'm going to go through the same screens that we saw on the demo. And once the authentication is complete, now I've been redirected back to localhost 3000 slash app. And I'm not actually running anything on localhost, which is why it says the site cannot be reached. But what's important here is that we've been given this code parameter in the URL, which is what we'll use to obtain our access token. Now we'll take our token endpoint that we obtained earlier and we'll add some data to that and make a request in order to obtain our access token. So we take our token endpoint and we need to add the code that we were given from the authorization response, the client ID of our application, grant type, which is always just authorization code, and then the same redirect URL that we used in the previous request. And in this case, we'll make a post request and when that returns, it will give us the access token, which we can then use to make all of the fire requests that we want to make. Now I'm going to quickly talk through how I implemented this in the code. And I'm actually using the Expo framework and specifically I'm using this auth session library which handles the redirection for us. So 
what it actually does, you can read it in the documentation, but essentially it opens a web browser for us, d uh, launches the authorization site that we need to launch, and then once that authentication is completed, it redirects back to a URL, and then this library will redirect back to our actual application. So the workflow in the code here, I've made a hook that will handle this for me, and I'm just going to walk through the outline of what needs to be done. So the first thing we're going to do is get the authorization and token endpoints. Then we're going to use this auth session .start async to begin the authentication and we'll provide the authorization URL. And the user could potentially cancel it or there could be an error, so we'll handle some errors. But if we did not receive an error, then we're going to obtain our access token by performing that post request and supplying the code that we received from the authentication. And once again, we're doing some error checking. And finally, when we have the access token, we can then make some fire requests to get patient data. The demo that I showed at the beginning of this video was for a patient-facing app, but we can also use this with a provider-facing app. So I've switched out my API key to use the API key of my provider-facing test app. And I'm going to go through the same workflow. I'm going to authenticate, and I'll once again be told that the app is attempting to sign into another service. Click yes. You can see the login page is a little bit different, and actually I can't log in as a MyChart user. I need to log in as a physician user. And I, I am having a little bit of issues here. It has actually authenticated, but the next step that we'd like to see is a patient selector. And so we may need to implement that ourselves or figure something out there, but that's basically how it would work. This code will be available in the Plasmafire framework. And once I clean it up, we'll have some templates available for you to start uh, creating a React Native Plasma application. And this is really exciting because now you can actually make native iOS or Android applications with Smart on Fire. If you like this video and you're interested in this topic, you can subscribe to get notified of future videos. And thanks for watching.